thus we begin. And as we harvest these trophies, you shall learn the journey the Colossi have taken to get here. Once we were but savages, no better than the other giant kin. We were called Myru, and to that identity we were chained until one day, Athene spoke to us. She spoke of a destiny and greatness that was not ours, but could be. She showed us the path of ascension, and we followed it here, to the teeth of Naros. No, we are far from the homeland of our ancestors. Undoubtedly, the gods wished us to renounce our savage history. It was necessary. Though the Jotun and Etin once regarded us as kin, they grew jealous of us, of the strength we gained from the gods' favor. Tensions rose to war. It was a sign from Athene to my people to seek a new homeland, where the bounty of her wisdom could be harvested eternally. They are vicious beasts, wild and strong. The Alphas, our quarry, are particularly fierce. Very well, Beckoned. my wrath. Wandered the teeth of Naros in search of the homeland we were promised. And when hope seemed lost, we found the Hyperion. It was a divine artifact. No mortal hand could have crafted it, a massive stone, alone in the wilderness, with the image of a floating city engraved upon its surface. At the city's heart was the Hyperion itself, we knew then Athene was tasking us to craft this wondrous city, to form a covenant. But we betrayed that ideal. To test our worthiness, the gods have strewn throughout Amalur riddles, puzzles, and challenges. Answering them demonstrates our greatness. The Hyperion is one such challenge. Perhaps the greatest of them. And though we discovered it years before, we still do not have the answer. Very well, Beckoned. My wrath.
In the end, the city rose, but the Hyperion did not follow. The heart of the city remained unmoved. That we could not abide. My predecessor, Arke, sought to force the Hyperion up, but the Hyperion rejected him, killing him and his followers, and sealed itself away. Our work here is concluded. As a show of thanks, take these. The Terex are mighty, and their hides light but strong. These will serve you well. The cipher you carry is a conduit to the gods, to their wisdom, their judgment, and their power. You carry it. And thus, you are their intermediary, since you will bear witness to the ritual of atonement. The gods will as well. It is a riddle carved of stone that the gods left for us. It shows a city of the clouds, with the Hyperion itself floating at its heart. It was a covenant the gods wished to form with us, to raise Idilla and the Hyperion with it. But the riddle is difficult. And we have no answer for it. I must make the gods see that my people can be redeemed for the faults of Arches. With a wreath in hand, I can conduct a ritual of atonement. As you bear the cipher, the conduit to the gods, you will bear witness. Come, we must conduct this ceremony the site of our original transgression. Let us go to the Hyperion. If it will not, then why were you brought to me? To give pretense to salvation? To raise our hopes, only to crush them with failure? I know the gods of my forerunners. They would not flaunt the answer to their riddles without sharing it. Now come. The Hyperion awaits. We must act.
beckoned. I was told that you and the Primos are allowed to enter. By all means, conduct what business you have within. The structure behind me is the holiest site in these lands. I can speak no more of it. I am sorry. I do not doubt that the Primos is loved by the gods. When the rest toiled in futility, he raised the whole of Idilla. Truly, it was a miracle. They are colossi who have witnessed the holiness of Anokatos and sworn oaths to serve his every will. The garb they wear reminds themselves of our savage past and how they are unworthy of all things, even the act of speech. Hence, their name. I am a humble guardian of this complex, here to make sure that none sully it with their footsteps.
You have come, good. We stand in a ground once hallowed beyond all things, now tainted by the excommunication of my people. Ever since that terrible day when arrogance and desperation brought about the disfavor of the gods, my followers have tended this place. Now come. We shall go to the antechamber of the Hyperion, the very spot where the sins of the Colossi were answered. The antechamber is the flawed design of Arches. It was the means by which he sought to force the Hyperion to join the city. It was to do so using the spark of divine magic Athene placed into each of us, that these fragments combined would create a force equal to that of a god. Such power was never meant to be wielded by the unworthy. The energies struck back at Arches, and the many assembled in his chamber, killing them. The end of this awaits. Much was ruined in that dark hour. The magics holding the paths together were unbound. Only the cipher can reorder such magics. Press ahead and set the path. Again, we find the way barred. I'm afraid I need your help once more. Finish this. We are almost done, Beckon.
We have reached it. Beyond that stone is the Hyperion, the gift of the gods. The symbol of a covenant concluded. It rests out of reach, waiting for the day when the gods forgive our trespass, when they find us worthy again. Until now, I feared such a day would not come. We should begin. The gods visited this room once before. It seems only fit that you occupy their position. I will take my place where Arceus once stood. Long before, Arceus dared grasp the power of the gods and was judged according to his impudence. We act now as their analogues. In you, the gods visit this chamber once more. You shall stand where they appeared and made manifest their wrath. And I shall stand where Arceus stood and bore the brunt of their imminent will. It is where the former Primos, Arches, bade the Hyperion to rise to join our city. Where the gods saw fit to condemn us for our hubris, it will be the altar of our forgiveness. We are so close now. them. After all this time, I bear witness to their confirmation. You have done so well, Beckoned, to bring the cipher to me and to let me use its strength. With you, I can do what Arcase could not command the Hyperion. This chamber harnesses the magic needed to control the Hyperion. Before you appeared with the Cypher, no force was sufficient. I knew that when we first met, when I first sensed the Cypher, that I could unseal the Hyperion and command its power. Why else would the gods furnish you, whom I needed most in my lowest hour? The gods have found my people unworthy of the gifts offered us. So, using the Hyperion, I will see Idilla destroyed. The wicked will be purged. And once the city falls, I will reforge the ruins in an image the gods find acceptable. I'm sorry, Beckoned, but you must be a martyr for my cause.
second. What has happened? Why are Anakatos' acolytes attacking us? What is he doing with the Hyperion? Destroy Idilla? No! That zealous fool! Have the loss of his gods driven him to such despair to use the Beckoned and the Cypher for such ends? We must make our way from this place. We need to stop Anakatos, but we cannot do so here. Things are bound to be dangerous. Take this. I have not seen a shield of this craft before, but I think you can make use of it. Now, let us move. The Primos has lost his senses. If he thinks his actions will return the love of the gods, he's gone mad with grief. Curse the gods for leaving the thing here. Anacotus will use it to kill all of us. How if we cannot reach him? And we can do nothing to stop him if his worshippers kill us here. We must make for the surface, and hope that there is time enough for us to deal with him. Farewell. Anakatos has sealed himself in with the Hyperion, and his silent choir will lay down their lives for him. I... I do not know what to do, Beckoned. I have defended my people from beasts and disasters, but nothing like this. Of course, I will not let Anakatos destroy my people because he believes the gods demand it. I know we have the strength we need inside of us, despite his claims. We are worth saving, even if the gods disagree. But Anakatos has sealed himself in the Hyperion antechamber. Without the cipher and knowledge of the Hyperion, we are lost. Anakatos was clever by exploiting your power. The cipher must be the key to unlocking the Hyperion, and he has broken it in his plan. But that is the one thing my people have been unable to do since we first came here. Only the Primos would know enough about the riddle for us to even try. Anakatos and his silent choir had a monastic retreat in the wilderness, Nixaros. If we need his knowledge, we best start our search there. It is an old portion of the city that was never raised up. It was supposed to be a shrine of quiet contemplation. Now it is the refuge of Anakatos' silent choir. The complex rests where it was first carved, in the Mountains of the Teeth. Nixaros is one of the many portions of the city carved out, but never raised into the sky. Anakatos and his silent choir use it as a retreat. Very well.
wanders into my camp. What is this? You are far too small to be a colossi. So it's true then. The beckoned has come. This is my home, but not for much longer. I moved out here to reconnect with my roots, you see. My heritage as a giant race. However, my time on my own has come to an end. I am ready to take the next step and go and live amongst the Jotun of the Teeth of Naros. There are only loose ends that need to be taken care of, but I have sworn off Idilla for all days I have left. Karunk was my chief concern with me trying to move in with the Jotun. Now that he is dead, it seems to be the perfect time to do this. The logical step is that I must live among the Jotun. Yes, I do. I have lived on my own in this abandoned Jotun camp long enough. Would you? I will reward you for your help. I will not be needing the coin where I am going. I want for my family ring, currently in the hands of my brother Heliodorus, and to see my journal delivered to my old comrade Darius. But perhaps most of all, I want you to find my wife, Corina. I, I would like you to bring her here to me. I once tried to forge peace between the Jotun and the Colossi, but as I did, I became enamored of the simplicity they enjoy. I have taken to living in this old camp to try and enjoy it as I can. The heads of the city's inhabitants are as high in the clouds as the city itself, with their talk of religion and righteous gods. I much prefer to stay closer to the ground and stick to my roots. Yes, the Jotun have wronged us in the past, but I would think a people so focused on gods and faith would have shown a little mercy. They act like they are above everything, but they are mud and dust, like everything else in this world. They just aren't decent enough to admit it. Most find it completely inhospitable, but I find that it is not so difficult if you try a different sort of living. Yes, the plants are unpalatable and the beasts cunning, but you can't expect nature to offer you wine and sweets if all you do is ask. You must retrieve my family ring, deliver my journal, and speak with my wife. The ring is currently in the possession of my rather odious brother, Heliodorus in Idilla. I doubt he will surrender it kindly. He hides it in the living quarters of Idilla. You can try liberating the ring yourself or finding a way of dealing with my brother. Convince Karina to come down from the city and see me. If you could bring her here, then I can talk her into living with me and the Jotun. My journal needs to be delivered to my friend, Darius. He is most likely camped out somewhere in the teeth of Naros. Be quick, Beckoned. I must get to the Jotun soon. There's not really enough space in this camp for two.
By the magnificent graces of Athene. A city was built upon gloried heights. So stood Idylla in bountiful tribute. A colossi bastion, the virtue of the Uranos. We build this for you, Athene. We build this for you, our blessed goddess. Hello there, Beckoned. Been traveling in the teeth of Naros? This... this is Histus' research. So that must mean he is preparing to go live with the Jotun. I cannot say I completely agree with Histus' methods, but I can respect his intent with his research. Thank you, Beckoned. Wish him the best for me. I am a mm, diplomat, so to speak. Though they lack our grace, some of the brutes of this place have in them a shred of reason. The marauders were once thinking, feeling colossi, and the Jotun were kin as well. I must try to appeal to their wisdom. Istus is a dear friend of mine, formerly a peer but as we tried to build ties with the Jotun, well, things turned. With this city still being incomplete, 
I have found myself more interested in research than the gods. We have been given the light of Athene, but we should share that with as many as we can. The Jotun have old ties to the Colossi, very old ones. We marshaled their strength for the glory of Athene before we came here. We felt ourselves their custodians, but they viewed us as masters, and their resentment only grew from there. We have earned much for our closeness with the gods, but we have a duty to share that connection with all of Amalur. The Teeth of Naros is a very dangerous place. Even those that know the dangers well can still find themselves at its mercy, or lack thereof. Be careful. There is nothing safe down here. You must be the Beckoned, the blessed visitor from an unknown land. But perhaps, if you have the strength to reach these lands alone, then you are strong enough to aid me. I have been studying the trolls in the area and have seen something of great concern. The trolls have unearthed a number of urns which possess a deadly magic. They are curious. For as long as we have been here, my people have not encountered the like of these urns, nor the ashes they contain. I lack the strength to face the magics of these urns, but Athene is in your thoughts. You could destroy them. The trolls believe these urns to be artifacts of the god Naros, but the ashes they contain have a vile, corrupting magic. I fear what may happen if the trolls are left in control of these urns, and the power they contain. Thank you for your help with this. The ashes contained in those urns are too dangerous. There are troll dens scattered around the teeth. It is probably best to start your search there. However, you will be able to feel the dark magic when you are near to one of the urns. There were tomes and prayers written in your honor centuries ago. We were forced to leave them behind, but if only you had seen them. I manage to do what I can in the way of study. There are few resources available for a student of history out here, but it is important nonetheless. Where would we be if not for historians? How would we have acclimated to this land so quickly? Idilla is indeed the most beautiful city one will ever see, for the gods themselves inspired it. I would prefer to stay within the sturdy walls of Idilla, but nothing can really substitute for practical experience, can it? This is the homeland of the trolls, so to speak. I aim to study them, so I must do so in the wild. Imposing and indignant creatures, we Colossi have managed to drive the majority of them from this vicinity. But those that remain have started digging. For what? I don't truly know. Only that they seek some means of retribution. Mind the trolls if you can.
meeting this stranger. Ah, yes, the beckoned. There has been much talk of you recently. I have been hoping to speak with you since I heard of your stay in Idilla. I have a task for you. One no one else in the city can perform. We have a plant in this city. The Evan Root. It was brought with the utmost care from our homeland. There was a special tender for the Evan Root, but he has passed. No colossi but the tender or his heir can care for the plant, so tradition dictates. The heir is en route to our city, but the Evanroot will die if it is not tended, and the heir is weeks away. Indeed you are not. No colossi but the heir may complete this ritual. But you are no colossi, are you? I must say. There was no greater relief than when I heard the Beckoned was an outsider. Oh, thank the gods. I have been at my wit's end for days trying to devise some way of appeasing all parties. It has not been easy. To water the Ebon Root, you will require spring water from Njorda's font. This water is outside the city, along with the vessel to carry the water. Find this vessel the amphora, and fill it with water from the font. Then bring the water to the plant and tend it. It is located in Njorda's font. Find it and fill it with the spring water. It is a ceremonial container and part of the Evanroot ceremony. It is kept near Njorda's font. Faith keeps most of our laws enforced, but I handle the ones not worthy of our god's close care. The Hyperion was to be the heart of this city, but it has eluded us for so long. How can we endure without it? You will not lay eyes on a greater city in Amalur. It was a beauty on the ground and is now only more beautiful that it has been raised into the clouds. It is a pure, clean mountain spring, named in honor of the God of Water. It is the only source we can use when tending the Evan Root. Would that we could cut ourselves off from it entirely. But though few will call it such, this is our true homeland. Stay alert, Beckoned. Yes? You have come again. Is there anything else you require? Very well. I shall endeavor to reward you for your labors.
blessings of peace. Can the beckoned be so Do you bring news from below? My brother? I would hardly consider Histis family anymore. He left that behind when he turned his back on civilization, like one of those marauders. What business has he sent you on, Beckoned? Is that so? Well, you can tell him that if he wants the family ring so badly, then he can come up here and claim it himself. Well, the ring is an heirloom, so to speak, but there is little wisdom in hanging on to such things, should their time be reached. It is in my chest over there. Here is the key. With my brother, indisposing himself, it falls to me to keep watch over my family's estate, little though it is. Do not trouble me with such talk. I know the sins of my people well enough. We all do. Histis has the nerve to call himself a brother, living in the wilds, acting like a savage. Might as well be a marauder. Look at this place. Why would anyone choose the wilds below over this? My family has done much for this city, so we are given our own private station in these quarters. They serve well enough, but I cannot say they compare to the home we had before we came to these blasted lands. They are the lowest. Colossi without faith, mindless, violent, and forever despairing. Yes, farewell. Many greetings, stranger. Greetings. I hope you have had some success collecting the artifacts around the teeth of Noros. Be careful with them. I expected the Beckoned would arrive sooner or later. Theme, guide your actions. I can help repair your... Return to me if your equipment requires repair. Everything one requires, one will find in the concourse market. Weapons, armors, and healing implements. I was one of the first to settle in Idilla, and I will be the last to leave if it ever comes to that. Many pine for our home of old, but not me. The clouds are my refuge now. My days as a guard are behind me, but I know my way around arms and armor. I can patch it all up. Farewell. Everything you need is here in the market. Welcome to the Idilla Market, Beckoned. Can I interest you in a freshly honed weapon?
Fare you well, Beckoned. brings the beckoned to me on this day. You have seen Histus? I have not heard from him in so long. I was worried something had happened to him. What business has he sent you on? That fool! He is as oblivious and idealistic as the day I took him for my husband. Very well, I will see him after straightening out some affairs. Lawbreakers and Idilla do not enjoy the luxury of internment. All lawbreakers are immediately subjected to combat. It may seem severe, but we are a wise people. None have had need to test this punishment. Least of all you, I am sure. If you require supplies, the concourse market provides... Mind yourself in the sewers. A majority of the tunnels are safe for travel, but accidents can happen. Mine is the duty to safeguard the Colossi from any threat, so Sikandra has charged all the guard. The Primos is the leader of our people in prayer and in other matters of life. They are appointed by Athene herself. I understand that you and she have met. She is powerful, is she not? Truly a paragon of might and virtue. If you require supplies, the concourse market provides everything. You must be the beckoned. Gods are good to us. Do you require assistance? I can heal whatever wounds you may suffer. Perhaps I should see Stratton's newest play. So you have completed the tasks, but I do not see Corina. Then her choice is made. Well, there is no more putting this off. I must take my leave. Well, the Jotam go with bare feet, so I will as well. Take my sandals beckoned. They may be of some use to you. Perhaps you are right. The Jotun are not exactly the most reasonable of creatures when it comes to outsiders. I suppose I could wait and observe them a bit longer before I make an attempt to live with them. Thank you for your help, Beckoned. You truly speak with the wisdom of Athene. Goodbye.